Hi, welcome to educators.com. I'm Shravanti, instructor. In this module, we are going to discuss what is HDFS blocks, what is the purpose of your rack aware file, how HDFS file will be written into your Hadoop cluster, internal mechanism of your HDFS file reads, failure scenarios of either name node or the data nodes, and finally the HDFS limitations. HDFS blocks. So in this by default HDFS block size is a 128 uh, MB of the block size. That means whatever the file you are placing into your Hadoop cluster that will get divided into each of the block as a 128 MB of the each. And in the older versions of the Hadoop, it is 64 MB is the by default block size. And even with the help of this DFS dot block size is the parameter, you can even adjust your uh, the block size. You can increase it to the 256 or 512 based upon the scenarios. And we will be discussing in the future once we have done the setup. I'll be showing you in which place you can modify your block size also. In this diagram, you can see a data nodes. So multiple data nodes are available. And the top one is your main node. So in this main node, we are consisting of the metadata information. That means it's consisting of all the block locations and also the replication factor. If you see this for the first file, this replication factor is R2. That means two replicas are going to be created for this particular file, part 0 file. And for the part 1 file, you will be having the R3. That means the default replication is in, so it is 3. That means your name node will be choosing a three different machines to store this particular part hyphen one file. So if you observe this thing, one and three, that means these are the block locations. So this is the block one is going to be stored in the two times because the replication factor is two. So the one block is there in the, this machine and this machine. That means total two times it is available. And when it comes to the 3, 3 is also 2 times. You can see it over here and over here. So when I say that replication factor is 3, your blocks 2, 4, 5 will be going to be replicated into a, any of the 3 different machines. If you observe the block 2, you can see the 2 is over here, here and here. That means in the 3 different places. So based upon your replication factor, those many number of replicas will automatically get created as part of your Hadoop cluster. Rack aware file. So if you observe your production cluster, you will be having a huge amount of the slave machines which are multiple data nodes. So your multiple data nodes get divided into your racks. All your machines will be divided into the racks. This is the networking concept, the rack U. So if you observe the rack 1, it's consisting of some of the machines. Similar way rack 2, this is also consisting of some of the machines. Same way with the rack 3 as well. And here, if a data node 1 wants to interact with the data node 2 within the same rack, this particular switch will be used. And in case your data node 1 wants to interact with the data node 4, which is available as part of the different rack, then it uses this particular switch for the communications. Your network administrator will be setting up these racks and inside these you will be having the machine. So what is the purpose of the rack aware file is nothing but this rack aware file will be used while placing your blocks, there is something called a data placement policy. That is nothing but, as we mentioned that the replication factor is 3. So you must need to get a 3 
copies of the same block. So in which machine my blocks are going to be stored is nothing more. The first block is going to be stored in the data node 1. And the same first block, once it gets stored in the data node 1, as per the block placement policy, the same block has to be copied into the rest of the two other machines as well. So if you see the yellow color block, it is there in the VN1. And the two replicas got stored as part of the another machine, which is DN5 and DN. And so here, as per the data placement policy, what it is going to happen here is the first block will be chosen for one rack, rack 1 for instance and the other two replicas always going to be stored in the rack 2 or in any different rack than the first rack because in the real time even racks also can go down. So whenever the rack is going down still you will not be losing any of the blocks. That is the reason why this data placement policy make sure that one of the block presented over here and the rest of the two blocks, two replicas will be presented in a different rack. The same with these blue color blocks as well. See here the first block got stored in the DN9 that is the data node, the, some ninth data node which is in the rack 3. So rest of the blocks it can be stored in the rack 2 or rack 1 other than your currently existing one. So it got stored in the rack 1 and also it will be stored in the two different machines because even the machines also can go down. So here in case if the one machine is going down still your data is available in the rest of the machines. So that is how your block placement policy will be made sure that you will never ever lose even a single byte of the data at any point of time. And HDFS file writes. How your HDFS files are going to be written is nothing more. Let's assume I am having a 300 MB of the file, it is a sample.txt file. When a client wants to write that file into the Hadoop, initially as a first step, the client will interact with your main node and saying that, hey, I want to place, I want to write a 300 MB of the file. So here, your main node will understand that okay this file is 300 MB so three blocks are required because default block size is 128 MB. So what it does is it just chooses the three different machines because the replication factor is three so the blocks are also I'm having a block one, block two and block three. So for these three blocks your main node will form all these block locations by verifying what are all the data nodes are available and which is having a free space and by considering all of these things name node chooses this thing saying that block 1 can be placed as part of DN1, DN3 and the DN4 similar way with the block 2 and block 3 as well. So once your client receives this block information by your name node then client responsibility is to directly connecting to the data nodes. So to place your first block 1, it gets connected to the DN1 that is the data node 1 and also at the time of connection it will also let the data node 1 know about the where the another two replicas get stored. So as per your this block location the another two replicas will be in the DN3 and the DN4. That is the reason why your client is passing those information as well to your data node 1. So data node 1 places this first replica of the block and for the next replicas what data node 1 does is it gets connected to the data node 3 because it already received the another two replicas has to be placed into the data node 3 and data node 4. So it's connected to the data node 3 and places your block 1 replica and also it passes the next replica where it has to be copied that is a DN4. So now data node 3 responsibility is to copy the another third replica into the data node 4. Like this all your block replicas gets placed. 
and once this particular block is closed, your data node 4 will send back the acknowledgement to the data node 3 saying that hey this replica has been successfully placed and this dn3 is going to be send acknowledgement to the dn1 data node 1 saying that those two replicas have been successfully placed. Finally your data node 1 will be acknowledging your client saying that hey the three replicas have been successfully placed for your block 1. Similar way guys, the same thing will be happen to the block 2 and block 3 as well that is family. This is how your file writes will be going to happen. File reads. So how your HDFS file reads will be happening is nothing but when your client says that I want to read a sample of PHP. So your name node already having the locations of those particular sample.php file. So once your client receives this particular block locations by your name node, now client responsibility is to directly connect to your uh, any one of the data nodes and then it reads this particular blocks. And that's what it does sequentially, that is one by one. Once your block 1 read is successful, then it will go and read the block 2 and then it will go and read the block 3. So like that, the file reads are always uh, sequential. If you observe, the client gets connected to the data node 1 for the B1. See here, here the B1 is BN1, so it got connected here for the B1. What about the block 2? Block 2, it gets connected to any one of these machines, BN3, BN4 or BNS2. So it gets connected to the BN3. See this? This is the block 2. Similar way, block 3, the BN2 gets connected and it reads that particular block 3 from here. So like that, all your blocks, block 1, block 2, block 3, read sequentially by your client. This is how your HDFS file reads will be happening. Same your scenarios. What is going to happen whenever you lost your one of your data nodes? Let's assume in this diagram, I lost my data node 2. So there is no heartbeat signal. Whenever the data node 2 down, it is not going to send the heartbeat signal. So automatically your name node detects that your data node 2 went down due to some other issues. So your name node responsibility is to replicate these blocks whatever the B2 and B3 blocks are there as part of this data node 2, these blocks get replicated into the another machine by your name node. So how exactly it works is nothing but your name node understand that okay B2 and B3 are the blocks which are there in your data node 2. The same blocks are also available in the DN3 and DN4 and the DN1 and DN3 as well apart from the DNT. So your name node will pass the instructions to the existing nodes that is for example for the B2 it has the data node 3 saying that hey you have a B2 replica so can you replicate into the another machine so that your replication factor will be always 3. So your data node 2 goes down still your replication factor is 3. That is the reason why if you observe, this is the colorless block, the B2 and the B3 got replicated into the some other machines. This is how at any point of time, it always maintains that replication factor 3. And let's assume here, the name node itself went down. So what is going to happen here is, as we know that the name node is the master for the entire Hadoop cluster, in case of the name node failure, your entire Hadoop cluster is going to be down. Nobody else can access because the main metadata information gets stored as part of your name node. So once you lose your name node, you cannot do anything else. That is the reason why in the latest versions of the Hadoop 2.0, we do have advanced concepts like the HDFS high availability. In the going further modules, we will be in detail discussing about how your high availability works 
in case one of your name node goes down, still the another name node will be available. Take care about your entire cluster. HDFS limitations. As we learned that HDFS works pretty fine for the larger files. But when you are having a lot of small files, the HDFS is not utilized best. The reason is, whenever we are having a lot of small files, the metadata information is also going to be increased. In other words, automatically your RAM size is also going to be increased. Your more RAM will be occupied. That is a disadvantage. Even to avoid this, to overcome this limitation also, we do have some other things called hair files. Even you can group your small files together into a big file and you can cross it as well. And there is another limitation. The HDFS is not for your frequent updates. If you wanted to keep on doing the multiple updates, HDFS is not the one. The policy in the HDFS which it follows is to write once and read multiple times. If you are having the frequent updates, then you have to think about using another uh, NoSQL database system called HDAs also. Summary. Here HDFS default block is the 128 MB and in the previous versions it was 64 MB and even you can increase your block size as well, whatever you required. And also we discussed about the rack aware file, which consisting of the multiple racks and each rack consisting of the multiple machines, which are the main node, data node, lot of machines. So this will be useful for your uh, data placement policy. To make sure that you will not be losing any single byte of the data, we will be placing one replica into the one of the rack and the rest of the two replicas will be always going to be chosen in the next rack itself. That is a different rack than the first one. And also it is going to be choose different machines as well. And also the file writes. The file writes your name node will be sending the block locations where you your uh, client wants to write those particular HDFS files. So your client responsibility is to directly connect to your client, connect to your data nodes, and then it will write those particular blocks. And for the replicas, your data nodes are responsible to do this particular uh, replicating one block into the another block. And also, for the HDFS file reads, we do have something called uh, sequentially your uh, blocks gets read one by one. And HDFS limitation, we have seen that it is not suitable for the smaller files, a lot of small files. And also if you wanted to frequently do updates, then HDFS is not suitable for that. This is all about our HDFS. In the next module, we are going to talk about the requirements, hardware requirements for our uh, data nodes and the main nodes. And we are going to do the installation setups. Thank you. Let's catch up in the next module.